Arch here. We've got another leaf in the shop here today. This is a little bit of an atypical repair for one of these cars, uh, but this car in particular, at least based on the data that we have, which uh, I'll show you here in a minute, uh, but this car appears to have a weak battery cell uh, that is causing issues with the car uh, not being able to hold any real charge, and actually the car currently won't charge at all because there's such a huge uh, voltage discrepancy. Uh, so we think that it's probably a, a cell that's gone parasitic and is, is pulling a lot of power um, you know, out of the rest of the pack and it's got just way lower voltage. Uh, I'll show a, a kind of a screenshot of that here. And uh, as you can see uh, on, the, on the LeapSpy app here, uh, there's a, a voltage difference between that low cell and then the average of the rest of the cells of basically a full volt. So most of the pack is at just a little over four volts, and this other one is, is down, uh, down to about three volts. Uh, so it's a huge voltage differential there, and obviously the car is not gonna work properly in that situation. Um, this particular car is a, it's a 2011 or 2012, can't remember which. They're basically the same, doesn't really matter much, but I'm pretty sure this one is a, a 2012, if I remember correctly. Um, so it's not, you know, in, in primo health, you know, in terms of the battery health. Uh, doing this cell swap probably is not going to help a whole lot in terms of increasing the usable range of the car, at least compared to what it was like before. Um, and that's kind of the case for, you know, working on any of these uh, Nissan Leaf batteries. Um, I've seen, uh, you know, some talk on forums and stuff, and we get questions when we get phone calls and all, uh, can you recondition my battery? And the answer to that is, for the most part, if you're just suffering from regular battery degradation, which is a very common problem on the leaf, uh, replacing cells usually can't do a whole lot to fix that problem. All right, so our first step here is we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the 12 volt battery. It's pretty much always the first step when working on any of the high voltage systems on any EV. So we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the negative terminal of that. And now the 12 volt system is powered off. Now we're going to disconnect the high voltage, which is the most important step of this process. Alrighty, so we're going to go ahead and disconnect the high voltage system on the car here. The high voltage disconnect on the leaf is right under this little flap here in the middle. And then there's just a cover here that's got three 10 millimeter bolts in it. Alrighty, so we got the plastic covers off the bottom of the car. Now all we have to do as a last step before we can drop the battery out of the car is we've got to disconnect our connections up here. So we've got our, our high voltage uh, connection, then we have our data connection on the battery here. Of course, this being an older leaf, it doesn't have the extra uh, battery heater connection right there. And then additionally, we also have to remove the little ground straps on either side of the battery here. And then uh, once we get all that stuff off, then it's smooth sailing to pull the battery out of the car. Ground data connector here is pretty easy to get off. It has this gray ring around it, and all you got to do is just give that a little twist, and it sort of pushes the connector off just a little bit. Kind of give it a little wiggle while we're doing that. There we go. And as you can see, as I twisted it up, it pushes the connector off. stuck on there. A lot of the time these get dirt jammed in them and they don't slide so easily. There we go. There it went the rest of the way and now it just pops right off. So now that's disconnected. And then our high voltage connection here, there's this little blue tab. So what we want to do is pull that little tab towards the back and then we've got this bigger black one and it has a little push tab right here. So that one's step one, this is step two, and it says, excuse me, I'm sorry, I had that mixed up a little bit. There's a tab on the side here, so we need to depress the tab on the side first. So now that's off. 
and then we press the second tab to get it off the rest of the way. And boom, there we go. So now our high voltage is disconnected and our data connector is disconnected. Our two ground straps are off. And now all we got to do is pull the bolts out that are around the perimeter of the battery to drop it. All right, so we're going to pull the two bolts out of the back of the battery here. Uh, they're a little bit tough to see, but they're right here on the back going through these brackets. They're kind of the hardest ones to get to, so we'll get them out of the way before we uh, lower the car on top of our battery table to pull the battery out. Otherwise, they'll just be too difficult to get to. So we're going to pull out these two bolts too real quick since they're in the middle as well and then once we get those out we'll lower the car over the top of the table and then we just have the bolts on the sides to remove. All right, so we've got the car lowered down over the top of our table here. Now all we gotta do is remove the six mounting bolts on each side of the battery, or sorry, rather three on each side of the battery, six total. So we'll pull all those out and then the battery will be freed. Alrighty, and there it is in all its glory. The battery pack removed from the car. It's always kind of weird to look at them from the bottom when there's no battery and it. it looks like there's so much space. Anyway, we'll go ahead and get this out from underneath the car here and then we'll start opening it up to inspect the, the modules and make sure that the cell we think is bad is indeed actually bad. All right, so we're going to start pulling this apart. First thing we've got to do is take this piece off in the, on the top here. It's got a bunch of little security torx bits. And then, uh, well, what I'll probably do first is clean up the lid here because there's a lot of dust on it. And we want to try and keep any ingress of that sort of thing out of the battery. So we'll clean that up and then we'll start pulling bolts out. And uh, on these batteries, it's pretty easy to get them apart. It just has a rubber gasket under the lid, so there's no silicone or glue or anything we have to fight with doing that. So we'll get to it. All right, got my dirty old rag here. We'll just wipe off all this loose dust so it's not going to get into the battery. Don't have to be perfect, just as long as we're trying to keep things relatively clean and All right, we're going to pull the central plate off here. These have got a security Torx. I believe they're a T30, if I remember right. They're on there pretty tight. All right, we got that plate off of there. There was a little bit of drama. Uh, 
unfortunately that for whatever reason the camera quit filming right in the middle of that but we got it off now we're going to pull off all the rest of the bolts around the perimeter so these are all uh, 10 millimeter and then there's a uh, there's i believe four 13 millimeter bolts so we're going to pull all that stuff off here real quick do the 13 first I got Eddie here to give me a hand, pull the lid off the battery here. Uh, Alright, I want to grab that end. Alright. Alright, Eddie's going back to work on his uh, RAV4 he's working on over there. But there we go, we got the battery opened up, and now we can uh, start looking at what's going on here. All right, so I've got kind of got some stuff unclipped here, as you can see. I uh, did some stuff off camera. You can see this, uh, this cable normally lives down here. I unclipped it and pushed it up out of the way. So our, our cell that we're looking for is in this module right here. So this is the last module in the chain of all of the the 48 modules here. Each module, of course, is two cells in series. So uh, this module contains cell 96 and cell 95. Uh, so the next module down the chain is this one. So this is module 47, and this one contains cell 94 and cell 93. So from our leaf spy data, uh, we know that cell 93 is the one that the BMS is reporting there's an issue with. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our handy multimeter here. I'll see if I can set this up where you guys can see it since I've already seen the data here. And what we're going to do is we're going to measure cell 93 as well as its neighbor cell 94. So we're going to measure right in here where cell terminations are. And this is cell 93. As you can see there, we've only got 3.09 volts. All the rest of the cells in this pack are at just a little over four volts. So that one is a full volt below. If we go to that cell's neighbor, cell 94, you can see that one's at 4.02. So clearly we have a, a bad cell or a parasitic cell or, or something here that's dragging down the pack. Uh, so we'll have to get this apart. I think the only way I can get this module out is to pull out this whole module group. And the way they have this assembled, uh, both these two modules as well as the two modules over here have to come out. All right, well, as you can see, uh, we got the whole module stack out there. Let me grab this piece of wood out of here. 
this kind of bends in the middle if you don't have something to support it. So a two by four happens to fit perfect. So now what we got to do here is this module right here is the one we're after. And uh, so we got to take all of the bus bars off before we take uh, the plates here off. Uh, the modules are all under, under pressure. Uh, they're all clamped together. So we want to take the bus bars off first. Otherwise, if you take the bolts out, everything all ends up all cattywampus. So we want to take all this off first. So let me get my tool here. So we got some little clips here. Boom. And we got some clips in the middle. That was a little bit of a pain, but they'll come off if you just give it a little tug. You want to be gentle, but not too gentle. And there you go. So now you can see all of our bus bar connections exposed there. So we're going to try not to touch any of the BMS wiring because we definitely don't want to mess that up. But let me get a Phillips uh, screwdriver for, for the middle terminals. Alrighty, well, it's the next day. Unfortunately, my camera died, and uh, I didn't quite film everything that I was trying to do on the modules here. Uh, but I went back and I checked what I did get, and I basically explained what I was going to do pretty well. Um, basically, we, we unbolted all the bus bars off of the, the front of the modules here so that we could get access to the module that we're having a problem with, which is this one right here. So if we take our multimeter here, you can see if we measure any two cells, or any single cells, we get about 4.02 volts, except for that one right there, where we get just a little over 3 volts. So this is our bad module right here. So what we'll do is we'll pull this one out, and we're going to replace it with another one um, from a battery that had a, a similar amount of natural degradation in it. Uh, it was down to six bars, just like this car is. Um, so it should be within a, a single digit uh, percentage in terms of capacity in relation to the rest of the cells. Uh, so it should be a pretty good match. Uh, we do need to uh, condition that other module first uh, to get it ready to, to put in here because it's not charged up to the same voltage as all the other ones in here. So we'll we'll uh, charge that one up with a, with a power supply and then we'll insert it in here, put everything back together, put this whole uh, stack of modules back into the battery, uh, reassemble it all and put it back in the cart. <laughs> 